Bitch, you're not a hobbit, right? No, I know, you just, you smoke that long pipe sometimes when you sit by the fire. Charlie, you don't even like the Enchanted Forest. All right, welcome back, everybody. I know that you missed us, all five of you out there who just love our show and, and actually listen to every episode. We had to take a bit and uh, head over to the Sad Sack Marina and sit on the boat of self-despair last week so but we're back and we're just gonna fucking do the same thing that we always do you know yeah you at this point if you're listening to the show you know who we are and what we're gonna do and and whatever anyway i'm elliot this is skylar we're sitting on truth island we're about to drop some fucking knowledge and wisdom and some uh just our opinions on shit, I guess. I don't know how else to uh, how else to describe it. We don't really have any ul- ulterior motives. Ulterior, 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 ulterior with a U. Under. Ah, right? uh, as opposed to. No, I don't think ulterior is a word, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just all, al- just alt. But anyway, what- <laughs> whatever. <laughs> We don't have any of those motives. Nothing fishy, He's nothing, gonna... you know, conspiratorial or anything like that. We don't serve some third party that's just collecting data on you uh, that we're going to use later, um, you know, once the metaverse is right. up and running. <laughs> mm-hmm. Full swing. We're not sitting on piles of our listeners' data that we're selling off to China. You don't even have to sell it or off. Or some just other country. Hack into it and then they, yeah, do one of those settlement right, things right. where you pay out everybody like three cents and call it good. <laughs> That's the American way. It's the American way. Honestly, we. I mean, China probably already has uh, their own version of this podcast. Like that's what they do. Is they listen in and then they steal the ip and then they do it better <laughs> midwest and, scumbag and then like in parentheses but china but china. <laughs> i don't know what that would be but i'm sure it'd be something it's a big country so there is probably a midwest equivalent yeah i would i would think it'd be like the i don't know the rice paddy fields of i mean it would whatever be the geographic midwest of the country <laughs> Or that, yeah, yeah. I don't think they the, have trailer the, it, parks. They just build, like, really tall buildings and have, like, five-by-five five rooms that people live in that aren't prisons. Mm, that aren't pri- <laughs> there aren't pri- They aren't prisons, we promise. But they're, I mean, they're pretty much prisons. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. Are we going to get murked? For talking I don't shit know, on dude. China, I, are we gonna, are they... every, <laughs> I always worry about that when I think about bringing up Chinese stuff. Like, um, I, there's somebody in the CCP just listening, just like waiting, writing down our information, and then like once they take over our country, like we're on a list of people who are going to be murked. Like, which is alright, I guess. I'm okay with that. For all of you out of the know, murked means uh, killed essentially yeah yeah mercenaried like in a i think that's what that shirt is short for, yeah right? well i mean I, I don't know if that's what it's short short for but just uh it's mm. one of those words yeah like getting capped yeah. i don't know what that's short for but like busting a cap busting like, a cap and a fool yeah. like yeah yeah it's language that i didn't really grow up listening to or hearing much of so it would be appropriating if i used it in a normal sense but i don't think it's in the popular vernacular anymore and i'm kind of a fucking piece of shit hipster loser who only jumps on board and says things after they're cool (laughs) and when it's not fun anymore like oh so you're still saying stuff like cash me outside and uh, yeah, like I started. Yeah, started saying that again because, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and all that Reddit Reddit <laughs> lingo, like how oh, it's a hecking good pupper, it's a cute oh, doggo, man. make me fucking uh-huh. sick. <laughs> 
I lay tip my fedora That's to you. That's a deep cut. That, like, uh, that was like unpopular early, early on in the days. Yeah. Like lay gem. Well, now it's, <laughs> now it's unpopular again. So that makes it popular. It's a very weird thing that, you know, when you sign up for the hipster newsletter in your email and they say, okay, we're going to send out the phrases and lingo that isn't cool anymore and hasn't been cool for a while for you to start saying and bringing it up with your friends and colleagues and coworkers and things to get them to say it. And then once they start saying it like it's a normal, cool thing again, you stop and you switch to this. You know, and it's, it's a weekly newsletter that keeps you updated on how to be a fucking douchebag. So oh. it was a good, uh, it was a good sign up. You know? They send like a good... grooming kit every month too. So you can trim your huge mustache. <laughs> <laughs> your like 1860s mustache that you have. Mm-hmm, and all the beard mm-hmm. oils yeah. and everything. Yeah. Here's the, here are the best tips to get the, the most curl out of the end of your mustache. And the, like, if you want to look to dastardly, keep... but not that <laughs> dastardly. <laughs> how to keep your hair cut in a way that looks like you're you might be a fuck boy but, but you also look like how to act like 80 percent of every other person that has that haircut <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i got <laughs> hey i want i want I got it short on the sides and a lot on top can you do that and then there you go that's uh, it that's all you have to ask for that's it yep yep i fucking uh I got my hair cut last weekend when I was when I was sad and didn't have anything else to do and I was so I went and got my hair cut and then like went to the store afterwards and was like I'm going to show this off. I feel I feel good. I feel fresh. And then like it, it, when you're in the checkout line and you look over in the other the other line and there was like this there was this huge fat dude with the exact same haircut nice. as me and I was like, "Oh, what okay. a chat." All right. <laughs> I was just like, fuck, I probably look exactly like that guy right now. And, you know. But that's, I I, I have self-body, I have body issues and, and shit, so whatever. We promote anyway. body dysmorphia on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> or on this podcast, excuse me. It's not a channel yet. It's not a channel yet. I mean, we have the YouTube channel, we just need to... Oh, I was talking basic cable. Scum.tv. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That that's the that's the road, dude. When everybody's cutting cable and switching to streaming, that's when you get a cable. <laughs> it's channel. hipster to have cable now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're yeah, subscribed really to like five different streaming services. <laughs> I have Dish Network. Yeah. I get like a hundred channels <laughs> and then like two hundred <laughs> channels that I don't ever watch. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I never really cut the cord. I've just been, uh, you know. Having pay- <laughs> having access to NFL Sunday ticket this whole time and before that yeah. what was cool was just having an antenna and you only got yeah. three channels. Yeah. <laughs> just the bunny ears and you're you're like uh, they don't even have to be yeah, bunny ears anymore. Cool. They make like these round ones that uh. have a better uh, transmit rate or whatever waves better. I'm not a scientist. Huh. You can pick it up at Dollar mm-hmm. General. It's like twelve bucks. <laughs> really that's not bad at all damn just as a way to watch pbs and cbs and local news hbs and no OBS. <laughs> you can get like three channels max i think <laughs> oh <laughs> it's probably somewhere around like 10 or 12 but yeah what I, whatever the like free television is yeah, nowadays free yeah you still pay yeah. 12 bucks for that <laughs> bunny ear antenna (laughs) yeah but then you could watch that for the rest of your life and as opposed to like a 15 dollar monthly subscription to say netflix or whatever that really is 15 bucks now isn't it yeah yeah it's crazy it was like like when you first got it because i didn't have it way back when but i remember you had it it was only like seven bucks right like seven bucks a month for streaming yeah yeah, I think it was like seven ninety nine. Eight bucks, no, eight was, bucks a month to stream yeah, like everything, and they had a way better library. They had back so then. much. 
It's so much stuff. That was back before they were, like, making their own content, so yeah. they were just licensing shit from everything else, so it was, like, all the good television shows and movies and stuff were on there, and then they slowly just started making their own shit, and I did see that, of course, like, I canceled Netflix, and then they had... I didn't know they were making a, a Neil Gaiman Sandman show. Oh, yeah, I saw that. that. Fucking... I haven't read the graphic novels, so I wasn't yeah, sure if it was going to be read, a Yeah, I read, like, miss. I read the first two or three volumes of it, I think. Like, I got one of the big, uh, you know, Sandman complete collection, like, in the library, oh, nice. and I was like, this is awesome, this will keep me fucking going for a while and then i i read like the first couple issues and then i don't know went off and did some other shit and forgot about it because at the time i was i was a young man and couldn't focus like very you know very different from how i am today where i always focus 100 percent on things to completion and never <laughs> never jump ship for something new after a week or two you know i never do that no no, no, I always fucking do that. I've always done that shit. But the like, I mean, the first uh, the first couple issues of Saiyan Man, it looked fucking awesome. The dude is like the he's like an emo king, and he wears like a plague doctor kind of crow mask, which is fucking sick, gas mask type thing. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. And then I saw they made a series, and I was like, fuck, they're really trying to get me to sign back up for Netflix, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm never going to finish Stranger Things. I I don't care. I just don't care. You know. I haven't even watched Stranger Things. Yeah. The first season was was cool, but that's all I've seen of it. And then like maybe the first couple episodes of season 2, but like I don't know. It was that's a it always sucks when shows time. have actors that they they cast as kids and then like they have to grow them up. But if the story yeah. doesn't really connect, I mean, I don't. That's probably not the case with Stranger Things. I think they do it so they're still like school age. Although they're, I think they're all over eighteen now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but whatever, you know, they got like whatever Riverdale, and it's like these twenty five, thirty year olds playing high schoolers. So. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, if you go back in the fucking eighties and nineties and all those high school movies and like all of the high schoolers are like clearly thirty year old fucking actors. Like that nothing nothing like high schoolers. At least when I was in high school, but I don't know. Uh it's that tough, you know, kids grow fast, so they do. you get a child yeah. actor and you're filming them. And one week, he has a normal uh, voice, and then the next week, puberty sets in, and he's like, Ugh. and that's yeah. And then you just have to fucking deal with it, and then fix it in post, I guess. I, don't if, know. I mean, yeah, I don't know what <laughs> it depends do. on how hard you get hit with puberty, I guess. Yeah. Like it, it was really unkind to some people. Go from this yeah, cute little kid to a uh, you know a monster with acne and <laughs> facial hair and <laughs> an absolute monster or if you're a girl you know you go from the sweet little thing to being groomed by drake <laughs> <laughs> that is the natural progression for for girls right it is yeah it is. Oh, god shouldn't it's, make light of that point. man <laughs> so bad <laughs> It is a real problem in the industry, from what I understand. Though. That is terrible. Oh man. On that, yeah, actually, on that like same line of thinking, Jeanette McCurdy. I don't know if you ever watched or have seen stuff from iCarly. A little. It was bit. a show I, that was kind of. It, it kind of became popular. It would have been when we were like kind of outgrowing that whatever yeah, live action Nickelodeon Disney phase Nickelodeon of... stuff. But yeah, she released yeah. her like tell all book. This past week. I saw something about that on YouTube that like the I forget the title of her book, but it's like I'm glad my mom died. Yes, I'm or something glad like my that. mother is dead. Is the title? Oh man! And, uh, yeah, I haven't read it, but uh, you know, just from reading little excerpts of people talking about it online, it sounds pretty fucked up. <laughs> sounds really man. super fucked up. I want to read it, but Oof. also I don't want to feel sad. 
Yeah, yeah. And it would suck it even more because, rough. like, I had a super crush on her for, like, ever. So yeah. to go from that, like, I, I, I wouldn't call it sexualizing because I was still very young. But to right. go from that to, like, I mean, seeing how like she older was living her us. day to day. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, she talks about this guy called, uh, the quote unquote, the producer Ooh, from Nickelodeon. Yeah. Uh, and we all know mm. who it is. It's Dan the Man. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> You know him. You love him. Oh, oh, God. That guy. The man that has a I, giant, literally has a foot as a pool. Ugh. Ugh. I've never, I've, I've never been a foot fetish guy. I just don't understand the, the feet thing. It fucking, feet gross me out. I'm sorry. Maybe it's because my own feet are gross and I feel very negative about them. So that means, like, I don't, you know. What whatever projecting maybe, but there are some people Psychology, that are super into anyway, that. I mean, obviously right. there are people that are into everything under the sun. Yeah, but yeah. you know, yeah, feet are one of those things. It's like being into a a, a, a nose. Yeah, right. Kinda, it's, like they just kind of serve. It's a not purpose. even a. It's, it's sort not of a like, secondary sexual characteristic, or you know, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, like you could, you could, you could be a man with very petite feet. And, and you could be a woman that has like with... hobbit toes. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gross, dude. <laughs> God Very well, damn. Master Frodo, if you ask. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. It's gross. It's nasty. <laughs> but so, but there's probably some fetish porn out there of that exact situation. I'm sure there is. Oh, I would man, bet money probably, on Probably. Unfortunately, homeboy Sam Wise was, was just, just, they made him like super subby in the, in the movies. But, I mean, the books, he was also hella subby. I mean, yeah. He would like, like they took, he took the role of like, I work for the Bagginses, so I'm, you know, I'm gonna be his like servant, and then. And all he really wanted to do was uh, plow that one Hobbit bitch's garden, if you know what I mean. Hey, uh, for how her name is, it's like Marie or something, something really Hobbity. Because yeah, they name something their, super their, Hobbity. Their children, I mean, like the women, they all get like normal names, and all the the boys get like bong water and. <laughs> Like <laughs> yeah, like Merriman and fucking uh, I forget Pippin's Pippin actual and Mary. name. I guess Mary Pippin had a... Peregrine or something. Oh yeah, it's Peregrine. Weird. Peregrine Took is his name. And I'm like Peregrine. Who the fuck names their child their their young boy Peregrine? Hobbits. But all right, Hobbits do so. I guess I better get used to it, man, because I'm really, um, I think I've, I think we talked about this in the past where I always want to be elvish or dwarvish, but really in real life, the closest thing I'm closest to is a hobbit. I'm, I'm fucking, I've got hobbit characteristics, bro. I, I can't help it. It's Do you have them hairy just in my feet? jeans. And you have them hairy ass feet. Mm, like breakfast I, and second breakfast. Uh huh. I eat a lot. I'm just a. I if I could live in a home that's like carved out of a hill, I fucking would. You're goddamn right, I would. That would in be this awesome. Economy, that's the best way. I would too. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Underground homes are are just smart economically. Like with the with heating and cooling costs. Like you're if you're insulated with literal dirt, it's not that expensive to to heat or cool your home like that insulation is is a good thing like hobbits are just smart fucking economists but that i just have to accept it i've i've, I've i'm a hobbit boy and eventually i'll <laughs> eventually i'll i'll accept it but that's okay they were like then, super in tune with the yeah. land so that's you know, that's something yeah yeah to be proud of uh yeah, and they're sneaky, which is good <laughs> or bad, I guess. I don't know why why I said that. But well, I mean, out of the two sneaky. from that universe that we know of, they both both been burglars. So 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fair. Even in uh even in like D and D Forgotten Realms lore, halflings, which are hobbits, they're also known as being sneaky little bastards and lazing around and having big old feet that they don't have to wear shoes for and which maybe that's that probably helps maybe that's why I'm sneaky. so averse to feet. <laughs> Although you think so. like that like if they were sneaking in a kitchen, their big hobbit feet would just slap <laughs> against the tiles. <laughs> Just sla- just skin slapping against the tiles. Like, yeah, like <laughs> they're all in the mine of Moria and fucking like all <laughs> you hear at the back, like you hear the clank- the clanking of everybody's like armored greaves and whatever, but you also hear the <laughs> just the <laughs> hobbits walking. Yeah, just the the wet slapping of his sweaty ass feet on the ground. <laughs> Like, you'd think they'd wear socks in that situation, but I've never seen a hobbit wear socks. I bet that's a lot of fucking thread to make socks for a hobbit. They have big feet proportionally, I think. I think. From what I've seen. Maybe maybe it's normal. Maybe they just, you know... I don't think they are. I think they are bigger because I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've seen the films, but I'm pretty sure they show it. You know, they make a point to make because because it would be weird if they had like human sized regular feet. It would just look strange. You want something like big and noticeable so your eyes are attracted to it. Yeah. Not saying I'm a foot person and I just looked for people's feet while I was watching the 12 hours that there is of Lord of the Rings. (laughs) <laughs> it's like a whole day thing if you want to watch it oh that's man, three dude, movies I bet. that's like i mean harry I, potter is ooh. the same way but it's over yeah. seven or eight movies because i couldn't do it all in one obviously mm-hmm. but man yeah. lord of the rings just it's been a long time it's been like 10 plus years since i've watched through the in one sitting the extended trilogy yeah I think uh, back when I first signed up for HBO, I was like, oh, shit, they have the... Because I think they still have the Lord of the Rings extended versions on them. So I watched Fellowship Extended Edition, and it was around the same time that like I had just finished the audiobook of Fellowship. So I was, I was in a real Lord of the Rings kick at that moment. And then I started, I started the audiobook for Two Towers, but I, I hit like... Like we've established, I I hit a thing where I was like, okay, I've been absorbing this way too much. I need to do something else, and I got distracted with something else and went on that tangent and just haven't gone back to finish Two Towers, the audiobook. So then I I never went back and finished Two Towers. I didn't watch Two Towers Extended Edition on HBO, and, you know, that's where I am with my Lord of the Rings talk, and now that I've now that I brought it up, I I probably need to go back and like actually fucking finish it. It's funny cause... you bring up the Two Towers is the one you quit on because when I was a child, well not a child, more like ten ish, uh, we had Lord of the Rings on VHS, but we only had the Two Towers, so I watched that one. You only had Two Towers. Yeah, I don't know wow. why. I think my mom just picked it up one day when she was at the grocery store. It was you know because I loved movies back then. I would always watch them. I don't think she yeah. realized it was a, you know, it was a whole thing. But so yeah. I've seen like the two towers, <laughs> the VHS cut, like a million times. Wow, man, that's the one that I I haven't experienced the most. I I've seen fucking Return of the King like, like thirteen times probably because it was so fucking good. It was amazing, but all three two of those towers were I've, amazing. yeah. Also, also because I got the PS2 game of Return of the King, I think. Oh, is that the one and that's that like was... Baldur's Gate, kind of? I think so. It's, it it's was very and... similar in gameplay. Yeah, it was co-op, because like I played it with my brother. That was, a, that was a big deal. Having siblings growing up being a gamer, it's like you kind of have to play co-op games because you know that's just that's just how it is but i had the exact opposite problem i was an only child for most of my childhood so it was all single player games yeah so you were like army of two that must be nice to play with your brother i mean i played that with you (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) 
that was my first excited about that suit. Like PS, that's PS3 era, Xbox 360. That is PS3 era. Probably a bad example of growing up, no, but yeah, you know, that game for the Gen too. Zs the out there. Cool. That is a fucking fantastic co-op game, dude. That game is awesome. Fucking it's too bad so they never good. Did anything with it? Yeah, but I guess Gears. They was they kind made of a, a sequel. They, did they? Yeah, it was like uh, I forget what it was called, but it was like Army of Two, the Red two, two. Game or something shit. Yeah, <laughs> they could have done something with a with a two pun. I'm sure they could have done like Army of Two, but Roman numeral two or something. Army, Army of, of Two, Army of Second, <laughs> Army of uh. You know, army of two T O O. Army of one then, plus like, one. Too much bullets. Very yeah yeah exactly. But no, it was something. It was something. I I forget the title of it. But I played through it. I think, I think it was solo because I played I played army of two with my. I want to say I played it with one of my brothers, and then I played it with you, and then, the second one came out. But it came out before. I think it came out before I played the first Army of Two with you. It but had it was, to. Have, it was I played Ar- Yeah, I played Army of Two a little bit with my uh, step brother, I guess, because he had it. But he was like, a mm, little, mm-hmm. he could be a little bitch, and he didn't understand the <laughs> aggro mechanic very well, so we never really got far. Oh, jeez. I just thought it was fucking awesome that like. You could go in and be like, "I'm gonna wear this mask." And yeah, you could pick your like, mask. Wear this and everything. Mask. That was so cool. Yeah, like and they were all in the game too. You didn't have to buy them. Zoomers, you didn't have to buy them. They weren't a micro. Yeah, there was no microtransactions back in the good old it was days. Just about where skills. games it was would, like oh, complete man. the game on hard to unlock this mask or. Uh, yeah. yeah they, they, were they had golden goals. masks, but it was yeah based on how you beat the game. I miss that kind of shit, dude. I do too. Fucking Oblivion, goddamn, had their stupid fucking horse armor, and it ruined everything for everyone. God, is that was that the start of it? Was that the onset? I, it probably wasn't the first, popular... but it was the first like big, super big game. I mean, this was two thousand six, yeah. so DLC probably came out two thousand seven ish. Damn, two thousand seven. So it was like they released this horse armor because everybody was bitching online that, you know, horses would die super easily. They're like, no matter what <laughs> level you were. So their response was like, oh, now you can put elven armor on your horse, but it cost like two bucks. And people were like, two fucking dollars? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> That's insane. That's fucking nuts. How dare they? Just for some try armor to, I can put to... on my goddamn horse, just put it in the fucking game. But no, Bethesda stood by it. They were like, <laughs> uh-uh, this is gonna be two dollars. People bought it. They bought that's the problem, is they fucking bought it. It's not they like this came out years it. after you know, they released the anniversary or the the master edition with everything on it. Mm. It was like at the time the only way to get it was to go on the whatever store storefront and spend two dollars from your debit card to buy some fucking horse armor and that and you know god damn here we are now 2022 and it's like <laughs> you 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 get a you, game you pay 60 dollars for a game games. you gotta spend another 20 on the battle pass if you want to play online yeah yeah and then you like kind of have to get the season pass which i i didn't understand at the beginning of uh when season passes were introduced but it's like now i i kind of get it it's it's, it's everything a scam it's, it's, it's of just like is what a season pass yeah. is yeah yeah it's like hey we're gonna we're definitely gonna have more fucking dlc that we're gonna charge for so here's all the shit that we couldn't get out by release day yeah that we're promising yeah. It's gonna be 30, 40 extra bucks. Yeah. Ubisoft's going through real that bad with... about that. Because <laughs> mm-hmm, it'll be like mm-hmm, 150 mm-hmm. bucks for the full game at launch. Ugh. When you can just wait three years and it'll be twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be on sale on Steam for yeah, twenty bucks. That's I'm going through that with uh Tiny Tina still. I'm still playing that. I'm making progress slowly, but they just they dropped another DLC uh maybe last week or something like that but but I bought the like the ultimate 
complete deluxe edition or oh, whatever so you get it when it drops. To Steam. Yeah, so I so I have it. It's in like it was a whole fucking thing that I had to update my game for, and I was like, fuck. But at least it's you know it came with it. I paid for it already. And then I just saw, like, I got the email that was like, oh, look, Tiny Tina on Steam, 25% off. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you fucking kidding me right now? But, you know, whatever. That's the exact it's, opposite it's of how I approached Xenoblade 3. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it for full price. I bought the season pass for full price. It was 90 bucks mm. for everything. That's almost Damn. $100 on one video game. It's insane. On I, one fucking game. Yeah. Holy shit. I was impressed enough was, by the first two, and they, you know, they did the definitive edition. So uh, I trust nice, it'll be nice. good. Yeah, I'm sure you. You were saying that you put like fucking forty hours into Zelda yeah, Three been like already. Two weeks since it's been out. God damn. Yeah. But yes, like yes, I have. Nice. Beat two, fucking and then went right insane. on to it. Beautiful. Ugh. Ugh. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. You're gonna have to pay though. I mean, it's gonna be full price for I, forever. I, I it's Nintendo I am game. gonna have to. They don't pay. ever put the, that shit on sale. Uh, no, they do not, man. Like I'll get emails. I like I have, of course. You you always get the emails of fucking like this game's on sale. Oh, this on your wish list is on sale. Blah blah blah. Like Nintendo, like Steam. I get those emails all the fucking time. But like Nintendo, it's. Maybe once every two or three months, it's like, hey, something on your wish list is on sale, and it's like, Artagami 2 Shadows Realm, like, third-party games that are, like, 20% off. Oh, yeah, off, well, the like, first-party okay. games, those, like, never yeah. go on sale, ever. They basically never go on sale. I, th I so. do think I picked up Xenoblade 2, and it was on sale, the complete package, for it was 10% off. So it was ninety dollars. <laughs> so it's a fucking steal. Was, yeah, and that's not all they do. I've been waiting for Breath of the Wild to drop below like fifty bucks, just because I yeah. already bought it on the Wii U. I don't want to spend full price on it again, but I'd like to. Oh, have Oh, that's it. right. Holy shit! I forgot that you played that on the Wii U and not on Switch. I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was like damn, one of the... and that's it. Still hasn't gone on sale. <laughs> no, I mean, for it has Switch gone on sale. Ever. I think it's dropped mm. to as low as forty five dollars, but that's it, and it doesn't go on God. sale often at all. It's like once a year. Uh, that game, uh, man, it's I I guess I understand it. It's definitely worth the the fucking sixty dollar price tag, but fuck. But like Mario Odyssey it's, hasn't either. Yeah, yeah, and I've heard that's fantastic. I'm not a big Mario guy. I've never, I've never been good at Mario games. They kind of piss me off, honestly. But yeah, like I've, I actually kind of wanted to play Mario Odyssey because I've heard a lot about how fucking great it is, and that it's the fucking bees knees even it or whatever. It's too expensive. <laughs> He says the guy. Yeah, that, I'm not gonna play it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna pay full price for a Mario game. Fuck that. I'll pay full price for Xenoblade. <laughs> <laughs> like if Mario made a fucking JRPG with like anime waifus and a gotcha mechanic, then yeah, sure, I'd I'd probably buy no it. No joke, but I probably would. I probably would buy. I probably <laughs> would. If they, if they, now like, that I say that, like, the, like the, that's kind of awesome. Mario RPG, then yes, I would buy it. 100%. Yeah, dude. Oh, Especially man. if they partnered with Square Enix for it again. <laughs> Ooh. So down yeah, dude. Square Enix has been... I've been all up in their shit recently. They're on a... I, I want to say they're on an upswing. As far as making games and shit. Like, they did Octopath a couple years ago. And I think that because that was so successful... They've been fucking, I mean, they've just been hammering home a bunch of great games. And I think they did They did the last Hitman, right? And they did... They published it. Like, yeah. And then they did, like, Final Fantasy XV was fucking yeah, awesome. Final Fantasy XV was great. I think sixteen. I haven't seen a whole lot on sixteen, but it looks so it looks good. It's amazing. From what I've seen, it looks fucking great. They're going back Ugh. to the, uh, the, like medieval style the medieval but with like magic is also 
used in their technology. So it's a weird mesh. Yeah. That's what I've always loved about Final Fantasy. Fifteen was good. It like brought it into the modern day, but it I felt like it lost a lot of the fairy tale charm. Yeah, yeah, has. it did. It's it's hard to I would say it's probably hard to balance the the fantasy cool parts of of Final Fantasy with like modern day like this is my automobile this is a fucking car bro this is a gas station with a bitch who just wears a bikini and has a southern thick southern draw but my god thick southern draw so hot oh my god makes me sick yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) it was like the first 20 minutes of the game too it's like yeah and it doesn't help that that game specifically final fantasy 15 has such a troubled development history and like there's a book that you have to read if you want the whole story there's a movie you have to watch if you want to know what yeah happens king's before. glaive i've been meaning to watch that because i was like this looks good and i saw that it had sean penn in it and i was like oh that's tight and of course he's playing the the king, the king who dies who was, <laughs> spoilers that the beginning it's like the first thing that happens 50. there's no build up to it you don't even get a like it's supposed to be super emotional but like like, I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. He's just like, take the yeah, sweet car, like, oh. go on a fucking road trip with your friends, and then immediately dies after that. Just immediately. It's like, oh, fuck, that's the main character's dad. I guess from that perspective, it's pretty sad, but it's like you you, you don't really have any emotional connection to him until, yeah, yeah. It sucks. Yeah. But... but the game was fun. I liked it a lot game was fantastic it actually introduced so um something that i think has become a staple in a lot of jrpgs yeah, i mean mm. it was probably a thing before it but that's the first one that comes to mind like everything after it has it is food you have like a character that makes food mm. or you eat food and you get stat buffs from it yeah yeah uh, ignis you know he's the cook and he like learns new recipes Throughout the whole game, that it's covered a new recipe. <laughs> yeah, recipe. So good, <laughs> infinitely quotable. That game is. Yeah, dude. That yeah, that photorealistic food was so fucking good. Oh my god, like. But like Kingdom Hearts had the, it. Xenoblade has uh, it. Mm. I don't know. Did Persona Five have anything like that? Like. Um. Probably not. Not, no. not so much. No. It's more of a persona. It's does more of its like the thing. curry, yeah, per, yeah. It's it's hard to compare those. But it came out before two, but, Final Fantasy fifteen, technically, didn't it? Because it was a PS three game. Uh, persona five. Yeah, it was originally slated for the PS three. Yeah, but so was so was fifteen. Was it? No, never mind. Hang on. I don't. I'm gonna look it up now because. That's a good question. Persona 5 was one of those games that, like, I had not played any of the Persona games beforehand. And then, like, I was just in GameStop one day, like, uh, here I am. I got money to drop because I don't have a girlfriend. And then, like, I was like, oh, look, Persona 5 just came out today. And I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. Let's give it a shot. And I was like, oh, all right. And then I'm hooked. And then they got me. They, they fucking got me. So... Me, I mean, uh, got me with four. That was a Christmas gift that Elliot gave me. Yeah. It was four, and I put like 100 <laughs> hours into it on my shitty-ass laptop <laughs> that could barely run it. But I, goddamn, I did put 100 fucking hours into that bitch. Man. I'm glad you did, too, because that was a, that was a, I felt like that was a good purchase. After I played five, and it fucking changed my world view mm-hmm. on how some jrpg games can be played and then uh 2016 all right what was final fantasy 15 oh final fantasy 15 was in development for many 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 years it's probably it probably predates persona 5 yeah probably as i think far 14 as, uh... was that was an online one oh it? released also released 2016 oh really playstation 4 huh mm. huh October was Persona, and then what the fuck was I? I was just at it. I was just on it. No, all my back tabs. Now I have to type it in again. All right, 
Sorry, folks. This is this is what happens when I look stuff up live on the air. I usually don't do this. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing a Persona Five on the PS3, <laughs> like uh, emulation website. All right. Mm, mm. The fifteenth installment. Release date 2016. Yeah. 2016. Where was the? Uh, 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 release. Here we go. Initially announced in 2006 alongside 13. Holy shit. Oh, that's pocket, pocket Edition. Okay. What? Never mind. Hang on. I'm just skimming. I'm skimming. 2013 the Wikipedia. is when it was announced. Oh, alongside wow. Alongside spinoff okay. game Persona Q, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So, it was like at the height of Persona mm. 4. Persona 4 is uh, fame because all the offshoots were coming off of it. Mm. <laughs> so then three years <laughs> after that, there was a countdown for it. And then it was like, oh, shit. Here's <laughs> another countdown. Because <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> like, Here's a countdown and then another fucking countdown for their shit. And then it turns out it's just like they partnered up with Nike to make a whatever... <laughs> fucking, to like make a, a fucking shoe yeah like a shoe it'd be a shoe like uh i was yeah. trying to think of the what's the bear's name in four teddy, teddy yeah it's like a teddy shoe and that's all it is <laughs> and it's only available for like three days at this one specific store oh, in fucking man. japan in tokyo yeah those fucking limited releases and shit i've seen i did see like after I bought Persona 5 the first time around, and then I, like, I don't know, looked around online at, like, special editions and shit, and it was, like, the, one of the, they had, like, a super deluxe release that, like, included, like, a, a book bag of the same, like, Shuchin Academy and, like, a bunch of pins and, and shit like that, and I was just like, Jesus Christ, but... They were going like uh it was like over a hundred bucks. And that was like at the at the beginning of its release. I'm pretty so sure like there was one that was like three hundred dollars. Like yeah, yeah, I think so. And that doesn't at include point, shipping from Japan, yeah. which I heard is very expensive. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Probably. Fucking crazy. It's uh it's I mean it's awesome. I wish that I had gotten something like that. I did get the uh, Persona Q2 for the 3DS. Um, I got that special edition that had a uh, a little Akamaru, the dog from Persona 3. He's like a playable character, but like it, it has a li- he's a little plush, and then it had like some buttons that I definitely lost, and like an art book that's somewhere oh. in my closet, and. But it was. I feel like it was worth it for that little Akamaru plush. My uh, my Jack Skellington plush is on his back, <laughs> and they're both sitting in the lap of my squirrel backpack. So cute. That's little. Yeah, a little a little snippet into my life, ladies and gentlemen, of all the fucking stuffed animals. <laughs> that's really. They have. That's really getting the girl's <laughs> panties wet, bro. That's what they want. <laughs> That's what they want to hear, is that a grown-ass man has a bunch of fucking stuffed penguins and shit. I didn't mention those until just now. Well, fuck. Yeah, Outed whatever. yourself. I whatever. All five of our It's not like my wall Hatsune Miku no. figurines, though. That's class. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a solid three, four grand right there. That's a solid investment. They're only going to go up, too. Oh, man. Yeah, they will, as long as you don't come on them. Or if you come on them and clean them That's why them I buy two at a time. Well enough. <laughs> so really, the total value is like eight grand, but that other four is a loss. <laughs> is a loss, just complete. The four, that's just a personal collection, a really personal collection. And <laughs> I do the same thing with my Gundam figurines. <laughs> Pictured by two of them set. That's so much work, dude. You, you're telling me. Gundam. 
It's so much work just to jizz on it. Oh, man. That's the hardest part Ugh. is building it. And then building it again. <laughs> it's just a constant, constant edging. <laughs> God damn. Son of a bitch. You got me. You got me. Ugh. <laughs> Those dudes who have like a, a shitload of figurines, though, like oh yeah, I mean good good for them, I suppose. Sure. I mean that's but... I mean it really is a big financial investment because those things are not it, cheap, uh, and you've got to import really them most is. of the time, so that makes it even worse than yeah. shipping. Yeah, like I uh, I don't know if I ordered anything from the actual Gundam website, but I definitely have signed up for their emails. I. I, I I don't know. I've signed up for so many emails and newsletters and shit. But I get emails from Gundam.com and blah blah blah, and they've got pre-orders out for a uh, like a the damaged Metal Gear Rex from MGS4 that's coming out, and I was like, oh, this looks fucking awesome. But it's I mean, it's a hundred bucks just to pre-order it for it to come out in like months from now, and I'm like, mm. but. There's dudes who are on there and that they, they jump at every fucking, I'm sure, they jump at every email. They're foaming at the mouth for every time there's like a Mecha Girls new release of some fucking anime bitch who also is the anthropomorphized version of a fucking bazooka or something. Like, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. And... I don't understand it. I wish I did understand it, but I don't. I don't think I have room in my brain. I don't have room in my apartment like <laughs> for all that shit. That that too, man. You like need display shelves and stuff for that. You wouldn't just put that on your desk, and you would you would want that out and displayed for displayed. anybody who comes in. Yes. Yeah. You gotta flaunt your wealth. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars on a figurine you're not gonna hide that away in your closet you're gonna fucking be like yeah i spent hundreds of dollars on that fucking figurine i mean if my grandma can get away with it and her stupid little angels and whatever i can get away with it with beautiful <laughs> anime woman <laughs> That's like our oh man, that's like our generation's version of those fucking little angel things. This makes it. Can you imagine that, going you know, to your grandma <laughs> or your grandpa? And he has, your, no, yeah, your grandparents and your grandpa has like the room you're not supposed to go into until you're you're 13 at least. Uh, and it's just uh, his, <laughs> his workshop, his toy box, <laughs> as he calls it. It's just full of like lewd ass and He's got like a whole wall figurines. that's just Funko Pops he's been collecting since 2014. <laughs> but then the other wall, you know, he's oh, got like man. one like really expensive suit. Like you can tell he spent a lot of money on it. Super expensive figurine, like bulletproof glass. It's own display in the middle <laughs> of the room, prominently. Bulletproof glass. Because that's what, like, robbers, when they break into somebody's home to to rob things, and they, they get into that room, they're like, you know, this figure is worth, like, $2,000. So, and it's just in like, like the a, year 2050, 2060, yes, absolutely. They will know. You're right. Yeah. They will know. Like this one... <laughs> One thirtieth scale Rius Grimmery is worth like seventeen thousand dollars, and that that'll buy me a tank of gas because <laughs> it's the future. It's the future, and we don't use gasoline anymore, but <laughs> at least not us common folk or the rich folk don't use gas. Yeah, that would be the thing. It'd be like the poor people still have to use gasoline, but like the super wealthy one percent elite live in their cloud cities. Yeah, driving their yeah. hover cars, their jets and cars that mm. use nuclear nuclear fusion. Ugh, yep. And the poor fucking working class fucks just drained the Ooh. last little bit of life there is from the earth. Yep, coming. And they're to you, living in Peter, just a haze. Be here soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
why haven't they showed that in in science fiction movies yet? You know, the the guys who were the major collectors of like shit that is relevant to us today. That's hot. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's kind of kitschy. It's kind of kind of lame. They did it. They they sort of did that on. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Orville, which is like Seth MacFarlane's version of Star Trek. Yes. It's you know it's it's pretty solid. It's an okay show. It started out as like a comedy, and then it's definitely gotten way more serious. I've been watching slowly watching this new season that they released and it's like a totally different shift in in tone like they're really he's like taking it seriously okay. now well that's because know. like the, but, the popular opinion was because like this would be like star trek if it wasn't him trying to be funny mm, but i mean it still yeah. has that bit of humor in it too i mean he just sounds like brian griffin i I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he really shouldn't have used his horrible talking voice for that character, but it's forever ruined him as an actor for me because all I hear is Brian Griffin. <laughs> Ass ahoy. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to separate. It's hard to separate that. But I mean, I, th- I thought it was still yeah. a good show. I-, I guess I would probably like it more if it really it's... is leaning into the whatever. Uh, when you call what Star Trek did it was like the fuck up of the week somebody fucked up real bad and everything had to be fixed by the end of the episode because otherwise it you know wouldn't make sense yeah yeah it's they they've definitely gone that route I've I've gotten that kind of vibe from this this last season I haven't seen it all the way through I'm maybe four or five episodes in but it's it's not bad. It's it's pretty good, honestly, for like a modern day Star Trek adjacent equivalent parallel. It's not maybe? trying. To, well, I've heard. I haven't watched Strange New World yet. I've heard that's pretty similar in vain to what like Trek was like in the nineties, early two thousands, mm. where it was mm. uh, you know yeah. just a, a story per week, some sort of moral ethical dilemma. That the crew uh-huh. would come to, uh, or the members that were selected for that specific episode, they would come to some conclusion at the end, you know. Data is human mm-hmm. in his own way, or... Right. Or like, uh, uh, you know, Worf comes something. from a warrior <laughs> yeah. clan, but, you know, maybe he doesn't have to be hardcore aggressive all the time. Maybe the path of the warrior is the way of peace. Or Whereas after the movies, all of my, yeah. the movies, uh, at least the recent ones, they had to start. They all had to be. Uh, there had to be like a cohesive story throughout. But they were really try at least with what I got of. Uh, God, that one Star Trek show that I can't remember the name of the most. It's not the most recent, but was it uh, Discovery? Discovery, yeah. It was like it had. Yeah. It was doing the. It had to have a arc. Ah, throughout the whole okay. thing instead of just mm, instead of episodic like one off hey we encountered this group on this planet yeah. or you know we're traveling to this sector but something fucks up in our engine because it's a genetic life form that pops out and we have to discuss <laughs> whether it's whether alive it's or not <laughs> <laughs> like every time like yeah. is this slug my- that was stuck <laughs> to my shoe is it sentient <laughs> My only frame of reference for for Star Trek really is Next Generation, and then like, uh, yeah, like the I think the first of the the Star Trek remake movies with uh, Chris, I'm super handsome guy, yeah, baby and, blue eyes, uh, yeah, and the other guy Zachary Quinto, <laughs> yeah, being being uh, what's his fuck, Spock. Uh, yeah, Spock. Wow, I, I totally forgot Spock's name for a second. But I didn't watch any of like the OG tri- trilogy. Tri- I did, but tri- I was young. I was very series. young. Mm. So yeah, that's really my only frame of reference. I watched some of uh, Deep Space Nine too, which is pretty yeah. good. Same, I would say it's the same level, if not better, than the next mm-hmm. generation. Mm-hmm. It kind of does the Man. mix of arcs and 
they're not really arcs it's just stuff comes up again more frequently and you don't really have those episodes where like the the doctor gets impregnated by a space alien ghost (laughs) (laughs) an electronic spirit from uh, the fifth dimension that somehow interacts with the field of what the enterprise flies through in space yeah <laughs> there's not a whole lot of doctor impregnation arcs is what you're there saying were <laughs> there, uh, were there were two specifically <laughs> two <laughs> i'm pretty sure it happened to the therapist chick deanna troy i, I think it happened to her as well and it also happened oh to Beverly yeah Mm-hmm. But I no no Beverly like the, Crusher wasn't pregnant. She just fell in love with a like a space ghost or something. I can't remember. <laughs> it's a really bad episode. <laughs> yeah, because Troy was pre- impregnated by the space alien electric thing. <laughs> yeah, because like Riker was was super like butthurt about it, right? Yes. Because he was always butthurt. They about, played like, that up I get for to like bang five any seasons woman, before but... anything came out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like in one episode, she was dating Worf or something. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a show! What a what a time! Indeed. Man. Timeless, timeless is what it is. Yeah. Jonathan, beautiful whatever uh patrick stewart he looks just the same dude he does i mean he's obviously Home showing boys. his age now Ooh. but wow he looks just i mean yeah like he was he was balding back then yeah. and he like then, hit like, 30 and he just stuck there for as long as he could he's just done yeah which is i mean like if that's if that's what being gay does to you it just stops you from aging like maybe maybe i'll think about it once i hit once i hit an age that i'm like okay this is a good age to just kind of stay at like maybe i'll be gay then once it gets scary that's the mortality starts creeping in (laughs) (laughs) i think it's gonna be gay i think that's called a midlife crisis Maybe, maybe that's what my midlife crisis is. <laughs> that you're gay now? <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a choice. I think we've established. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. But he looks good for his age is the, uh, is the the point of what you were saying it was that he's gay as well that was another point i wasn't making it but you yeah uh no i brought it up but yeah you know it's at the front it's at the forefront of my mind at all times <laughs> but what <laughs> but whatever this isn't the therapy episode anymore no this we're all, we're the, past that we're beyond that we've moved on come back beyond is that our next <laughs> That we're gonna, <laughs> the stars. We've explored the ocean. Oh, that's beautiful. Scumbag Beyond. That's the, yeah. We've explored the ocean. We've hung out on the different islands. And we we haven't, I mean, we, we didn't 100% the Justice Archipelago. But, like, I mean, we've made probably enough to get the main story through the main story arc. We didn't do all the side quests, but... And sometimes Whatever, you get a little yeah. bit over leveled and the side quests aren't really worth doing even though they have their own little perfect stories that you don't want to miss but you're also like man i put 50 hours into this thing i just want to get <laughs> yeah, it. I, I just want to get it over with i just want to get it over with at that point you know like where you get to the point where you've done you've done so much of the story missions and you're like I gotta I gotta go do some side quests but then you do a bunch of side quests not a whole lot but you forget the main thread of the story oh, yeah. and then that, you that go back and try to do a main story that was my quest issue with and the you're Witcher. like who the fuck are these characters yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I've been uh, I finished I got the books to complete the series of those of the Witcher books, so I've been I've been trying to read those again. And uh 
Yeah, because Netflix uh, killed it. I don't it. know why I mentioned that. Yeah, Netflix really. I was very incredibly upset with season two. Like the production value was great, and it was it was cool for what it was. But like they should have come out and they were like they were super proud of season one being close to the to what the story was in the books, and it was it was it was pretty solid as an adaptation. But then after that, they should have come out and said, okay, season two, we're really doing our own thing. We're not really close to the books at all anymore. But they didn't say that. And then I was going in expecting the same level of, like, uh, what, what is that called? Uh, not, like, not authenticity, but... I don't know. You had an uh, expectation that it was going to be as good as season one, which season one was pretty good. But yeah. even as yeah, like, like they, a non lore buff, season two just was like they made some choices that didn't even make sense. That just really, didn't make sense. Yeah. Like why kill off uh okay, I probably shouldn't spoil it because people are going to watch it, but man, they made some oh, really weird two, choices. Like ago. like why <laughs> hype up who you're casting and then just yeah. kill them off like immediately. In in the one episode that you finally introduce them and like, hey, here's this major character in both the games and the books that's actually really cool. Well cast and as well, I will say. It, honestly, it was really solidly cast, and there, it's a character that like deserves his own. He he could have his own series of fucking stories, like all of the main Witchers of the world of the Wolf School have their own like arcs and things that are that are dope it's just cool being a witcher in general you know Geralt just happens to be the best one so but then it was like okay here we go here are these characters that you know and love and that have major things that they do in the stories and are are big influences but we're just gonna fucking kill him off in the same episode that we introduce him in a way that like he never would have fucking it it wouldn't have happened. It didn't happen in the books first off, and then it wouldn't have played out that way if it did happen. There's no way that okay. We're getting into spoilers. All right, sorry. That's enough. But I, if you want to hear the rest, to, we have of to this talk about Conversation. It. You're gonna have to pay three ninety nine because it's <laughs> DLC. <laughs> and that's where we end the episode. Well, maybe it was your song that helped me become a hero. Well, maybe I like that. Uh. Man, get the fuck out of here, you hobbit trivia bitch! Who the fuck asked you?